So now we're on to challenge three. And now we're gonna be getting information from an external server and we're gonna be bringing it into our web page and then displaying it. Now there's a lot of concepts that are taught in this challenge and I'm, it's gonna take me a while, but I'll go through all of them, I guess, in relevant enough detail so that we can kind of understand where all of this code is coming from. So there's a few concepts that I wanna introduce you to. So the first one is JSON. And JSON is essentially a text format for transferring information. And it looks kind of like a JavaScript object. You have these key value pairs inside it separated by commas. And the keys are always strings. And the values can be strings or numbers or booleans or other objects that are embedded like this or arrays of objects or values. And they can also be set to null. So that's kind of like the undefined data type. Now, even though this is quite nicely formatted, when you send JSON between machines, it's generally sent in the form of a string that looks something like this. So this is basically just this, but it's been mushed together into a single line string. So we have, this. Now, if we want to perform functions on this, this JSON, you can't really run any methods on this. So we need to convert this into a JavaScript object first. And to do that, we'll create a variable. And what we do is we call a method called json.parse. And to this method, as the only argument we give it a string, a JSON string like this. And these JSON methods like this, we don't need to import any libraries to use them. They're just part of vanilla JavaScript. So if I do console.log and I log this JS object, we've essentially converted this into a JavaScript object. And now I can run any JavaScript method on this. Now, if we did some work with this object and we wanted to send it back across, we'd need to turn it back into a JSON string. And what we can do for this is we can use json.stringify, which is the opposite of parse. And into this, we give it a JavaScript object and it's converted it back into a string like this to send. Now, remember we parse converts a JSON into a JavaScript object and stringify converts a JavaScript object back into JSON. And this is how we can send and receive data. Now, the actual sending and receiving requires this object called a XML HTTP request. And this essentially allows us to send these JSON strings between locations. So, in this example, we have this resource right here. So it's a JSON string, I guess, and it's stored on a server. So it's, it's stored on GitHub. And how would I bring this into my web page so I can use it? So the first thing we need to do is we need to create one of these XML HTTP request objects. And to do this, we can just say, let request equals new and we use a new constructor here and because we're using new we have to give a set of brackets so this request is one of these xml http request objects and we can use this to request this resource from the server and bring it back in so we're going to have a look at this object and see what it's all about so if I console log it and run it. So we have an object right here. And as you can see, we have a bunch of methods and a bunch of fields. So when we send this off, what it will do is it'll fetch the data in the server and it'll set this response text field right here. If everything goes okay, this response text field will be set to the content of this. So before we can send off a request, what we need to do is we need to open it. So 
we'll call request.open. And this open method lets us set some properties of the request to, to tell it what to do. So it takes in three arguments. The first argument specifies the action we want to perform. And there are a bunch of these, but when we're fetching a resource, we are trying to get something. So this action is called get. The second argument is a URL of the location of the resource that we're trying to get. And I have this URL right here. So if I wanted to fetch this, I would give it this URL. So I'm going to paste that in now. Now there's a third argument that it takes and what it does is it, it determines whether we want to run this synchronously or asynchronously. And it's true for asynchronous and false for synchronous. So the difference between async and sync is that async will not interrupt the flow of code after it while it's waiting for this action to occur. Um, we wanna make sure we do this so that if there's an issue with the server and it's being slow, we want to make sure our web page doesn't get interrupted while it's loading and the system doesn't freeze up. So I'm going to give this true to make it async. Now that we've opened this request, what we can do is we can do request.send and what that'll do is it'll go to this URL and it'll receive this text right here. It'll retrieve it and it will put it into this response text field. So I'm gonna run that now. And as you can see, that's what it's done once it's logged it. Now, this happened really fast, so we don't really see the, any problems with this, but what if this was slow, and by the time that this got executed, this response text hadn't been set? So that's where we need to do something else. So this XML HTTP request has a field called onload. And what onload is, is it's a reference to a function to run once the request has been retrieved. And whenever we're doing any code that involves this resource right here, we wanna make sure that we put it inside a function that we specify to onload so that it, it's only executed once we've retrieved the resource. So to do this, we're gonna set the requests onload method. And I'm just gonna do this right here. Remember that this is a property, so we said use the equals operator to assign it to a function. Now again, you can create a function and give it the name, but I'm just gonna write a function in right here. Oops. And now if I do console.log request, so what it will do now is it'll send it, and then once it's received the data, it'll log the request. So I'm gonna run this now. I'm gonna clear it first just so we can see it. And yeah, so like I said, what it's done is it's gone and fetched this raw data and it's set the response text field right here. So we don't essentially need to log the whole request thing if there's no errors. See, we are, even have status and yeah, it's not really relevant for this. So what we can do is we can just select the response text field. And if I clear that now and run it, Oops, oh, this needs a capital. So if I just run this now, hopefully a second time. Yeah, so we've essentially just got this, all the data as a string, and now we can work with it as we wish. Now I'm just gonna drink some water. But remember what I said about the fact that you can't do any methods on a JSON object. So what we need to do is we need to pass it into a JavaScript object. So what we would do is we would say let, and I'll call this object result or something. And we're gonna do json.pass. And we're gonna pass this string right here. And remember this string is stored in response dot, oops, it's stored in request, because that's what we called it, request.response text. And now I'm gonna go ahead and log this just so we can have a look. 
and clear this and run it. So now look what we've got. We've essentially retrieved this and we've turned it into an array of JavaScript objects. Now this is like just a normal JavaScript object that we can run any methods on. So we could go make a for loop that goes through and retrieves all these codes, for example. We can do anything we want with this result. So what I've essentially done is shown you how we can get this JSON and then bring it into our machine to do code on it. So now we're going to go and take a look at the challenge. Now there is a few problems with the challenge I've noticed. It wants you to do things in a specific way. So I'm going to just point those out when we get to them. So what it wants us to do is it wants us to update the code. Well, and it's told us we have to do it here. And what it wants us to do is when we click this get message function, it wants us to retrieve some data that's stored in the cat photo API. And the URL for this is this cats.json file and they've given you the URL right here. So it's on the local machine, so it's just using a relative file path. And what it wants us to do is it wants us to replace this. The message will go here text with basically just the raw JSON output. So whatever comes in with response text, we want to just place it into here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new XML HTTP request here, like they've done here. So what we'll do is we'll say let rec for request equals new and XML HTTP request. I've got to be careful here because I'm, I tend to make a lot of errors when it comes to spelling. Yeah, that's supposed to be two small t's and small p. Yeah, so I'm, you know what, I'm just going to copy this in just to make sure we're okay. Okay, so then what we want to do is, remember we're fetching a resource, so we need to open this request and we need to set some properties. So the first thing we want to do is specify what we're doing. And again, we're fetching, so we're going to put get here. Secondly, we need to specify the, remember, the URL of the resource. So I'm just going to copy this right here and paste it in. And finally, the final, we need to say whether we're running this asynchronously. Now, it doesn't actually tell you if they want us to do it asynchronously, but I'm fairly sure you do because in the example they've done it like that so I'm just going to put true here and then we're going to send off this request so we can just do rec.send but before this we have to make sure we set an onload function to actually put this data into here once it receives it so I'm going to do rec.onload equals and I'm going to send this to a blank function like this now, what we, we do here is we have this rec.response text set to whatever the JSON output is. So we want to basically put it into this box here. So we could just basically select it and set its inner text to the JSON, but for some reason it wants us to pass it. I don't know why, but it doesn't work if you don't do it. So we're going to pass it into a JavaScript object first. So we're going to say let object equals json.pass and we're going to do rec the rec, which is a request.response text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select this box right here and we can select that using the class message box, but um, they've done it already, so I'm too lazy. So I'm just going to copy this. And we need to set the text of this. So I'm just going to put in it, sorry, text content, which is what we did in the last video. And we want it 
to set it to the JSON output. But remember, we converted it into an object, so we're going to have to use stringify again to bring it back into a string. This feels like such a waste for some reason, but it just has to be done for this challenge in particular. So we're going to pass it and what we're going to, sorry, we're going to run stringify. And we're going to run stringify with this object. So I don't expect this to work first time, so I'm just going to try clicking it. And it seems to have done it right here. So it's basically put this raw JSON data in here. But I'm going to try running it. And no. It wants us to change the inner HTML instead of the text content. So even though it does the same thing, it wants us to use inner HTML instead. So I'm going to try it again. And yeah, that seems to have worked. So I went a bit weird there. So I'm just going to go and clarify everything again. So we just created an XML HTTP request. We set the properties using open. So we wanted to get the JSON from this URL and we want to do it asynchronously. And once it's loaded, we're going to pass the response text, which contains the JSON data back into a JavaScript object. And then we're going to select this message box right here. And we're going to set its inner HTML to the JSON version of this JavaScript object. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, that's the end of this video. I know it's a lot to take in, but I think if you just look through it quite slowly, it will start to make sense. So yeah.